Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello, hello, my name is Sarah McCarthy. I'm the creator of McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm super excited that you're taking time out of your busy schedule to join me as we break down today's best standard. I respect your time, so let's just jump right in, okay? This is ma.5.nso.2. Whoops, this should be two. I had that there was a typo right there. Not 2.1, but 2.2. Um, by the way, this document is not something that I have created. I cannot take credit for this. This is from the Department of Education, the Florida Department of Education. They provide this document to the public that provides more clarification on the standards. So this is what I use when I'm breaking down and processing the standard so that I can then create resources that are aligned to the standard, like taking on the best. So just know that there was a typo there. I'm sure that they will catch it because they're constantly updating it. Uh, by the way, MA stands for math, five stands for fifth grade, NSO stands for the number sense and operations, and then the 2.2 is the standard that we're working on today. So this says to divide. Today we will be dividing multi-digit whole numbers with up to five digits by two digits using a standard algorithm with procedural fluency. And then we must represent our remainders as fractions. So for instance, in this example, if we had 27, 27 divided by seven, that would give us a quotient of three with a remainder of six. And we would take that remainder and put it on top as our fraction. And then our denominator is the divisor. We go through that in all the videos for taking on the best. So if you're like, I don't remember how to do that, I walk through it in the video lesson. So take a look at those and I'll show you where those are in just a moment. All right, let's take a closer look at the standard though. It said that we are dividing, right? So we're dividing up to five digits right there. That would be our dividend, a five digit dividend divided by a two digit divisor. Our dividend is the total amount that we're taking and separating out. Our divisor is either how many groups we're putting something into or how many are in each group. The divisor is the other known that we're given. So we're usually given the dividend, we're usually given the divisor, and we're trying to figure out the answer, which is our quotient. Also, it does say procedural fluency right there in the standard, which means that students will be able to use whatever strategy works best for them. As long as they are fluent with it, they understand that they're easy, able to go in there without even being guided, they know which strategy they wanna to use to divide, okay? Um, it says, With this within this benchmark, the expectation is not to use simplest form of fractions. So they do not have to use the simplest form of fractions, but can you talk about it? Absolutely. Okay, um, and then for the related benchmarks and horizontal alignment, these are other benchmarks in fifth grade at the horizontal level that this standard, this division standard will impact. Okay, it aligns with those. For instance, 5.fr.2.4, we are dividing with unit fractions. So the division we learn here will apply to that. MA.5.AR.1.1 is multi-step real-world problems with division. 1.3 in the AR strand is with division with unit fractions with word problems. 
MA.5.M.1.2 is our measurement conversion standard, and we're either multiplying an amount to get a smaller unit or dividing to get the larger unit there. And then of course we have a volume standard where we might be given the total volume, but we have to figure out a missing side length, okay, a missing dimension. So we definitely need them to be fluent in the standard, to master the standard, because it does help to align to other standards in fifth grade. Next, we have some terms from the K through 12 glossary. They've stated that the that you need to know what equation means. That means that there's just an equal sign present. We're trying, we've got two different sides that need to balance each other out. Expression means that there's no equal side pr present. It's one side of the equation. Maybe we need to find the value of the expression, but there is no equal sign present. And then whole number means that we're just working with numbers like zero, one, two. In other words, no negative numbers, no fractions, no decimals for this standard, even though, even though, hang on, let me clarify, because we will have to express our remainders with fractions but we're not dividing fractions in this one. We're only dividing with whole numbers. Cool? All right. Okay, next we have the vertical alignment. I love this because we just talked about where, what other standards will be aligned in fifth grade, but now let's see where they're coming from in fourth grade. And in fourth grade, they should be coming with this benchmark, 4.NSO.2.4, which is division with a one digit divisor. Now, as of recording this video, this is the first year of implementation for the best standards. So students this year are coming up with those common core standards. And luckily they should have learned how to divide with a one digit divisor last year using the common core standard. So they should be coming up. It's not too much of a jump this year. And then in sixth grade, we are multiplying and dividing positive numbers with decimals which kind of used to be a fifth grade standard with Common Core, uh, and now they've moved it to sixth grade. We do get into a little bit of multiplying and devising, devising, yeah, dividing decimals this year, but in a different way than what we've seen in the past. Okay, next up, we've got the purpose and instructional strategies section. Uh, with this one, they just provide a whole lot more clarification for the standard, and I'm just going to highlight a few things that jumped out at me. So again, with proceed demonstrating procedural fluency with five digit dividends and two digit divisors. Just so you know, to demonstrate, ooh, jumping around, to demonstrate procedural fluency, students may you may choose, sorry, this students may choose the standard algorithm that works best for them and demonstrates their procedural fluency. A standard algorithm is a method that is efficient and accurate. In other words, if they like using the area model or partial quotients and long division does not make sense to them, they get to choose what they want to choose to solve this as long as it makes sense to them. Here they're talking about where they were coming from in fourth grade and where they're going in sixth grade. We just talked about that, so I'm going to move on. Students should gain understanding that this quotient means that they're... Okay, so when we're looking at the example that we had and we had a quotient of three and six sevenths, students need to be able to interpret what that quotient means. So students should gain an, an understanding that this quotient means that there are three full groups of seven in 27 and that the remainder of six represents six sevenths of another group. It's not a completed group yet. So I just did right here, this is just showing that we understand what the remainder means, which will fit nicely with this AR standard right here. In a real world problem, students should interpret the remainders depending on its context. So we'll get to that when we hit that standard. Even though the best standards don't, the best standards are written in a way that they can go together for the purpose of this program and just targeting what it is that you need with each standard, I have separated them out, isolated them. But sometimes in the math missions in taking on the best, we combine different things there. 
different standards. I like here that it says, it kind of gives us the freedom to say students should start to gain familiarity with frac that fractions and decimals are numbers that can be equivalent, like a remainder of one half is the same as five tenths. And also that they should be able to understand that a remainder of zero means, ooh, means we should erase everything. Means that the whole groups have been filled without any of the dividend remaining. So really taking time, not just to solve these problems, but to explain what the answer means, what the quotient means. Um, of course, here it says we're going to estimate before solving. We do that. And taking on the best, I'll show you. And down here, they mentioned that students should engage in error analysis activities, which I love because math misconception mystery covers you there. And there's other problems as well. Um, just looking here at the instructional task, we have here that they're just practicing interpreting remainders, which I like that they were doing that. So you can take a look at that there. All right. Let's take a look at what you have access to with your resources in taking on the best. So you can either enter right here at the members enter here tab or at the white box. Click on taking on the best, which grade, fifth grade, which standard, NSO, oh, sorry, which strand, NSO. And then we're going to ma.5.nso.2.2 and all of these resources are aligned to this standard. So divide whole numbers by up to two digits divisors. All right, these are your bronze resources, which include the video lessons and the printable student guides. So we have one, two, three video lessons and you'll see the topic covered in the lessons on the cover right there. It says divide up to five digits by two digits using the area model. The next video, we're doing the same thing, but partial quotients method and then long division. So showing a, a variety of ways to solve these division problems. However, the standard did say students can choose whichever one works for them, whichever one they prefer. So if I click on the video lesson, student printable, you can see here is our problem. This is a four digit divided by two digits. And here's a five digit divided by two digits. We estimate first. We'll break down how to solve using the area model. And if you're like, I don't know how to solve it using the area model, watch the video lesson because I break it down there. And um, then we check using multiplication. So it's a pretty heavy lesson. There's only two problems, but look, we're estimating, we're solving it and we're checking it. Okay, with two problems. So those are your three lessons there. And then you can go to the silver plan. If you have access to it, it will load. If you're, if you do not have access to it, it's because it's not part of your membership. Um, and if you want to upgrade at any time, just let me know, but here's your silver resources. If you have the silver plan, you have your printables, which include those video lesson pages, answer keys to everything that I'm about to show you and the math misconception mystery video, which I'll show you where the printable is there, but this is where you can watch the video. All right. So this is our video lesson. You can tell by that icon right there with area model. And then here's a practice page that does not have a video lesson. It's just extra practice. In fact, I gave you two extra practice pages for that area model. Now, if you're thinking, okay, um, you should, let's say that you show the video lesson for area model but you have students who already know how to use the partial quotients method and they can use it well with procedural fluency, let them do it on this page. That's totally fine. They can just check their answers with that, with that answer key if you want. Um, and then we have the video lesson for partial quotients, checking using multiplication. Here's extra practice. And if you give out this extra practice and you have somebody that likes the area model better, that's fine. According to the standard, it's fine. Long division and then extra practice for the long division. Okay. So then this math mission right here, a math mission is like a math task. Okay. It says it's usually a multi-part question. 
Here it says use each card one time to create a division problem that has a quotient of more than 70. Show how you can expect to find the exact quotient. So you have to, your students would have to take, use these digits here, create a dividend, create a divisor that has a quotient that's more than 70. That's a lot of thinking going on there. And then here we have somebody who tried it and got a quotient of this, explain how her theory is incorrect. So there's explanations, there's some more error analysis, but the mega, the mega error analysis video is with the math misconception mystery. I showed you where the video was, it's right here, but this is the printable that goes with it. So first, this, the video walks them through the whole process, but first your students would solve this problem either independently or with a group or teammates and then they um, will watch as four other characters in the video, which are me dressed up as silly characters. They'll watch as that, those four characters explain their work. Three of those characters will make a mistake that students commonly make, and only one of them has the most reasonable answer. So after the video, after watching all the characters, your students will then file their detective reports, which is this page, page two. They'll explain who the most reasonable answer belongs to and why. And then with the other ones, the other characters, what did they do that was correct? What was their error? And what do they need to know for next time? So those are super fun. Here's your answer keys there. And then if you have the gold plan and you click here, the page will load and you have access to um, everything. You've got the bronze, the silver, and then you have the mini assessment and McCarthy Math 155. You also have a little bonus perk of getting these videos without any ads. You can just watch them right here with the, with the resources. That's a nice little perk. But the main bulk of having the gold membership is these two resources here. The mini assessment for this standard. Just kind of skim through so you can see. And then you have your answer key there. You can take a look at that if you have the gold plan. And then McCarthy Math 155, let me go back. McCarthy Math 155 was the program that I created when we were using the Common Core standards in Florida. So now we're using the best standards. And after researching the best standards, I was like, this is not going to be enough to fully support you. There's a lot of changes. I need to make a new program. And there we have taking on the best. However, I have had a lot of schools and a lot of teachers ask me if they could have access to McCarthy Math 155, which has 155 uh, video lessons for each grade that you have, all right, for third, fourth, and fifth grade. So while not everything translates according to the best standards, there are a lot of things that trickle over. And for division unit two, there are 10 video lessons we go over the standard algorithm, which is long division, partial quotients, and then some word problems. So when you click here, look, there's so many video lessons here to help your students walk through, especially if you have students who just didn't quite get it there and they need more practice of just practicing the skill, this is the place to go. This is the, the main highlight of the, having the gold package is you have even more videos and even more printables to go with it. Okay. All right. That's the standard for today. And I hope you found that to be helpful. But before we go, I just want to remind you that what you do with your life, it really does matter. We have the best profession in the world. I know it's hard. I know it's exhausting. I know it's stressful. Oh my goodness. But what you do every day for students, what you pour into them every single day, it really does matter. What I am doing today is because I had a teacher, a handful of teachers who believed in me. I wouldn't be here today without them. So thank you for all that you do and I'll see you next time. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.